Hello, amazing online crew. How's it going? And how's your social media going? Is your social media working for you? Or is there a little bit of improvement that could be made? So we're going to concentrate today on five reasons that your social media may not be working. So you can do a little bit of a check-in with these things against what you're doing on social media and see maybe if there's an, some areas that you need to improve on. Now, I guess, honestly, I could come up with five more. Like I could come up with 10 or 15, maybe even 20 reasons why your social media may not be working for you. But where these five come from is a lady in New York. Her name is uh, Dariana Lozana. <laughs> And she wrote a blog. She's a, the co-founder of a um, you know really successful media marketing firm in New York. And she wrote this article regarding the reasons that a lot of people fail um, on their social media. And I was reading it going, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> I agreed with everything that she uh, said. And I, I could add more. But I just want to highlight the five that she highlighted because this is sort of seems to be across the board some of the reasons that people are not doing very well on social media. So I thought it was really worth sharing with you guys so you can do a bit of a check-in with these five particular things. I mean, as I said, there are more, but these sort of things and see if you can sort of improve in these areas. So I'm hoping that this information will be, um, you know, helpful for you today. So how is everyone today? Awesome to see the crew jumping in. Um, if we've not met before, I'll say hello to you guys in a minute. If we've not met before, my name's Helen Martin. Bit of a giveaway because it's right there. <laughs> this is my little mate, Henry, over here. Henry's my little messenger bot. He gets plugged in every now and again. I haven't plugged him in for a while, have I? But that's Henry. And we are a community of entrepreneurs, home-based business owners, direct sellers, those in MLM, network marketing, the digital online space. And we are learning to leverage social media, like bring our business online and really leverage social media and use modern online strategies to build our businesses. And so I'm in the trenches doing this myself, obviously. I'm in the industry myself. And what's important to me um, in my business is that I don't want to hassle anyone to join me in my business. I'm not interested in doing all the old traditional, um, you know, strategies that I did previously. They still work for some people and that's cool. What, you know, if something's working for you, continue with it. But for me, it wasn't working and I wanted to come online. But it's a massive, massive learning curve and it's always changing. So, um, you know, I've learned how to do it for myself and I'm continually growing my business and the strategies that I'm using in my business and what I'm learning about with social media, I bring to you guys. So hopefully it can help you get smarter with building in the online world rather than working harder because you can certainly do that on social media. It's very busy. It's fast moving. If you don't keep up with it, you could get left behind, particularly for our industry. There's things that we need to keep up with because Facebook doesn't particularly like our industry. So we have to be extra careful more than other people in other industries. So it's really important to keep on top of all this stuff and what's trending and what's going to give you more maximum exposure with the algorithm and, you know, platforms and stuff like that. So that's everything we talk about here. Um, on this, um, well, with the awesome crew that we've got here. So who is here? We've got Heather on. Hello, Helen Martin, Henry, and all of this wonderful crew. You got it, Heather. It's a beautiful online crew. Gloria, have we fixed StreamYard? I can see your profile. <laughs> Gloria's had a really hard time with StreamYard, but I can see you. Woo! Um, just hasn't got the emojis going on, which are these emojis. So if you're not familiar with our community here, we have a few emojis which represent different areas of our community. So the fish is for our 
free Facebook group. So some of you may even be watching from there. So I live stream on my business page and my free group at the same time. So those in my free group and any of you on my business page, you're more than welcome to join that community. So that's called Social Media Strategies for Home Business Owners. That's the fish emoji. The palm tree emoji is just obvious. <laughs> it's for our community here. The cruise ship emoji is for those in our online crew coaching community. So my private coaching community those that are a little bit more serious about their business and want to get really practical. And uh, the anchor is if you're a life member of my online crew coaching community, which Heather definitely is. Yes. We've got Jade. How are you, Jade? Good to see you on. Gloria, I'm sure I'm posting at the wrong time. Okay. I really need to focus on my insights. Absolutely, Gloria. On business pages, um, we have this amazing amount of information in the back end in your audience, like your insights for your page. And if you're not looking at them, you could be missing some really valuable information. Hello, Amanda. Good to see you here. Hello, Monica. We've got Susan. We've got Shauna. How are you guys? Good to see you here. And it happens with my mouse again. We've got Julie. How are you going, Julie? Good to see you. Um, Susan saying hello to the crew. I have no sound. I'll watch the replay when I get home. So sometimes when there's technical issues, I mean, whoever it is probably can't hear me say this anyway, um, but you just jump out and jump back in. And that often resolves a lot of technical issues. Also, whoever that is, just at the bottom, uh, at the very bottom of the description in my group, you won't see it on the business page because you don't need it, but there's a streamyard.com forward slash Facebook um, link. You just need to click on that link for uh, StreamYard to show me who you are. Hello, Edith. How are you? Another life member of our coaching community. So looking forward uh, looking forward to doing my live video challenge after this. Awesome. We've got a whole heap of people in the middle of a 21-day uh, uh, video challenge at the moment, and they're doing amazing. I've thrown some curlies at them, uh, this particular challenge, but they're rising to the occasion. Hello, Carol. Oh, are we having an operation? Oh, happy Valentine. Oh, that's what I forgot to say. For those in Australia, we are on Valentine's Day. So some others of you might not be quite there yet, but it is Valentine's Day here in Australia in our time zone because we're already on the 14th. So, yeah, happy Valentine's Day to your husband. I hope everything goes well, Carol, like our thoughts are, are with him and you as well. Hello, Crystal. How are you? Oh, you got sound now, but we still don't know who you are now. <laughs> so just click on that StreamYard link at the very bottom of the description and we'll be able to uh, see who you are. Hello, Melinda, Cynthia, doing settlements and listening. You're multitasking. <laughs> I don't have an iPhone, so uh, don't get fun emoji. Don't, uh, doesn't your phone still have emojis somewhere? Um, even if you've got a different phone, you should have emojis available to you. Maybe you just need to activate them. Hello, Mitch. Oh, it's you, Cindy. So click on the link, Cindy. Um, so we, oh, there we go. There she's done it. All right. Cindy's got herself sorted out. <laughs> Good to know. Gloria's just blank. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so a new phone, so I had to do streaming out again. Okay, no worries, all good. All right, so let's get into the content for today and the, uh, for today regarding these five reasons why um, you know your social media may not be working for you. And if you've got other people building on social media and they're having some problems or they're not really getting um, you know the maximum out of their efforts on social media, please, please, you know pass this broadcast along and share it out to other people because it's just information that some people may not realise. And the thing with this industry is we generally get into the business first and then we explore social media. So we get into this industry because there's something we liked. We got given an opportunity and thought that sounds like a good idea. Some of you may come from, um, you know, a company with products you know, whether it's, you know, health and wellness or weight loss or, you know, whatever it is for you and you got your introduction that way and then you went into the business. Like we end up here because something, you know, attracted us in the first place and it's generally not because we want to be really good at social media or know anything about social media or know anything about marketing for that matter. 
So when we enter the industry, it's for a reason, like you might just want to generate some more money or you've fallen in love with a product or something like that. And then suddenly you find yourself dealing with this whole world of, you know, network marketing, which is a beast of its own. And a lot of people have, still have issues with it and it's got a stigma to it. And then when you're doing that online, whether that's what the business is, like it's a digital business model anyway, or whether you want to build on social media, suddenly now you're learning social media. So what you thought you got into is now suddenly a whole new ball game. <laughs> and there's all these new things and it's like, well, you're, you got into it for that, but now you need to learn marketing skills. And most of you... Uh, you know, you're not screened or pre-qualified with marketing skills before you get into this industry. But the words network marketing, what's the second word? Marketing. Yet, yeah. basically, most people go into this industry not knowing anything about marketing. I know a little bit about marketing because after I did accounting, I went and did a, a Bachelor of Business majoring in marketing. But that marketing and this marketing is totally different. What I learned in my marketing degree and uh, what's going on here is two do totally different things. That's traditional marketing. So even if you know a little bit about marketing or traditional marketing, that is so different to social media marketing because traditional marketing is all about, you know, pretty much leading with the sale and newspaper ads and direct, you know, direct marketing and uh, direct sales and all those kind of things, direct response. And that's not social media marketing. Social media marketing is a whole new beast. So it's possible that you've entered yourself into a world that you had no idea you needed to learn about because <laughs> you want to build online. Would that be fair to say, guys? It was certainly for me. Like I entered network marketing. It's like that's a whole beast on its own. And I didn't realize the stigma attached to it. I didn't like it for starters. I'm one of those people that's like, oh, I don't want to do that. Um, there's still a lot of people out there like that. So we've got that to deal with. And then it's like, oh, well, I don't want to do it the traditional way anymore. I've done it that way. And it worked initially, but now it's not working and now I want to go online. And then, whoa, there's all this new stuff you need to learn. So most of the problem with why people aren't successful on social media is because they don't know any marketing skills. It's not your forte. It's not what you've brought up to do. It's not what you learn at school or university or college or whatever. So fair enough. People come onto these platforms and all social media platforms and they don't know what the hell they're doing. Would that be a fair evaluation for a lot of you, that you've suddenly found yourselves in these areas that you didn't thought, didn't think that's where you were going to end up? And, you know, for those of you doing Facebook advertising, you didn't realise how much of a skill you need to learn. You can't just slap up a Facebook ad and expect it to be successful. And there's probably some of you that have spent thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on Facebook ads because you don't really know what you're doing. So we suddenly find ourselves in these whole new worlds and it's like, I just wanted to earn some money. <laughs> I just wanted to start a business on the side and earn some money. But the problem is that's not enough, guys. And you need to learn marketing. Sorry, but it is the way it is. And why a lot of people fail is they don't know anything about marketing. So that's where you sort of need to concentrate some of your efforts is learning the skills to be successful in the online world, the digital world and social media. OK, so a lot of these things will relate around that. OK, so the first thing and this is taught uh, it's what number the one number one things taught in marketing, but it's not taught necessarily in our industry. But that's about finding your perfect prospect. And it's these buzzwords called target market. So the number one area, and I've got notes down here if I'm just sort of looking down slightly, the number one thing that um, Dariana finds that people are not successful on social media is they don't know their audience. So most people, when they enter this industry, it's like, but everyone can benefit from my thing. Like everyone can earn some more money or everyone can be a little bit healthier or, you know, just those general statements. Seriously, if you think you're um, targeting everyone, you're basically throwing mud up against a wall and just hoping it sticks with somebody. You're throwing stuff out on social media and you're just praying. Like some people call spray and pray. 
So you just spray stuff out there to anybody who will listen and you're just hoping that someone will grab your message and hold on to it and join you in your business. If that's how you treat your social media, you won't be successful. Maybe every now and again, you might capture somebody's interest, but you don't want to build your business on every now and again. You want to build your business on recruiting people like every single week for it to be viable for you. Having a sale every now and again is not going to help you build a viable business. Okay, so knowing your target market, which is definitely a marketing term, which no one would talk to you about necessarily in your network marketing or online business because it's not what they concentrate on. But social media is all about your target market. So that number one reason why people fail is you don't know who your audience is. You don't know who you want to target. You don't know who you want to hone in on. And you should do because you can't spray and pray. And if you think that everyone can benefit from your product, you're delusional because it is it is just basically throwing stuff mud up against a wall and some of it might stick with somebody. But when you're laser focused about things, I know I harp on this, guys, but there's for very good reason. When you know your brand, know who you're talking to, know who it is, like it is a woman, is it a man, is it both? What age bracket? Where do they live? What income bracket are they, um, you know, in? What what keeps them awake at night? What, what's their problems that, um, you know, stress them out? And how are you going to solve that? Like all of that side of it. Like, who is it that you want to help the most? If you really think, who is the perfect person I want to recruit? <laughs> Can you hear Harley snoring underneath me? <laughs> Sorry, that really distracted me then. It was just a massive big snore. You maybe you can't hear it, but it's, sorry, squirrel moment. Um, but you really need to hone in. And then you talk to that one person in your social media. You don't talk to everybody. You talk to that one person. Name the person. It's called a customer avatar. So name the person. So my person, her name's actually Sue, has been for years. My customer avatar, her name's Sue, and there's certain things about Sue that is my perfect recruit into my business. So I revolve a lot of what I say and do um, to this Sue person. So when you're talking to the person that you want and you hone in on that, that's who you're going to attract, guys. And that's you want to start attracting the right people and attract your tribe and attract the perfect prospects. And when you're honed into that person, that's what you'll attract. When you're here, there and everywhere, that's what you'll attract and that's what the results of your business are going to be. So that's number one is that people just don't know their audience. They don't know who they want their audience to be. They don't understand their audience. They don't know what problems keep them awake at night, all that kind of stuff. You just spray and pray. So please don't spray and pray. Okay. Um, oh, Lynn, I just talk, I just caught that. No, they tell us that everyone is a prospect. Talk to everyone. No. <laughs> and maybe those that think purely tradition in the traditional sense, talk to anybody. You know, maybe if you ask them a couple of questions and see if they've got a need for what you've got, and if they don't, then don't go anywhere. But not on social media. Everyone is not your prospect. Even in the traditional world, everyone is not your prospect. Otherwise, everyone would already be in your business. Everybody would be in this industry. If it was that easy and everyone's your prospect and talk to every person that breathes, you know the old saying, the three-foot rule, anybody that's in within three feet of you is your prospect. They are not. They are absolutely not, particularly on social media. So you, you might want to suss people out like different people in your warm market and ask a few questions and see if they might be a good lead for you. So you might treat people in your warm market a little bit differently, but it doesn't work on social media at all. That's just spray and pray, okay? Um, number two reason that she said is um, not consistent enough for a few reasons. Not consistent enough to have your name out there not consistent enough um, in what is that you're trying to, um, you know, give value on or, you know, promote to people um, but coming from the place of value. So, um, you know, people don't really understand or you come and go from social media. If you come and go from social media, so will your results. 
So if you really want to hang in there and get consistent results, you obviously you have to be consistent on your social media. It just makes sense. The other thing is for the algorithm on the different platforms as well. So when you're consistent and you've got material that goes in front of your audience like all the time, then they get used to what to look for and then they'll know there's going to be fresh material on your page every day. And even if they've, they've been busy for a couple of days, they'll come back to it and they'll know that there'll be fresh things to see. So if you um, go AWOL for a week and somebody comes back and there's no new fresh material, there's not a new live, there's nothing to look at, then they'll, they'll go and look at something else and they'll forget about you. So, um, you know, if you're not consistent, please don't expect your results on social media to be consistent. You've got to have, you know, interesting, valuable um, content going up all the time. So when people are looking at you and looking at your business page, there's something fresh to look at all the time. And then that works, you know, with the algorithm in that they know that you are, you know, serious about your business and there's content that people are engaging with. And when that increases over time, like it doesn't happen overnight, but when that um, increases, uh, all the time, then the algorithm grows with that because your engagement interaction is growing because you, you've got a following because people are loving your material and you're putting new material out all the time and everything just grows from there. So lack of consistency and lack of effort, like if you let get life get in the way and you don't post for a few days or a week or something like that or you used to go live and now you don't, whatever, that inconsistency is going to send you backwards on social media. Social media moves too fast for you guys to just disappear for a while. Um, you know, I mean, people can have a break and those kind of things, but, you know, generally, if you're generally inconsistent all the time, then you're not going to get the results that you're looking for on social media. It just it just moves too fast. They'll end up following somebody else because you're not there. Okay. Uh, Shauna, I lose my mind when we're told to target everyone. No. Marketing 101, not everyone is your prospect. It's just go and look up any marketing, go and Google it, go and go to YouTube and um, just look at marketing principles. Target market is the first thing you get taught in marketing. Not everybody is your prospect. It's a spray and pray strategy, absolutely. And as I said, it might work every now and again. Because somebody might just be, you know, your perfect prospect dotted in, you know, there. But it's not a successful strategy um, at all. Yes, that's exactly what they say, three feet. I never felt comfortable with that. I was so glad to hear you tell us that it's not the right way. It's just not. I mean, if you want to do it, go for it. But you're wasting your time. You're wasting a lot of energy talking to people that don't have any interest in what you have to offer. And that, that, that then flows a lot of negativity. Like people get pissed off with you. They don't want to hear your message. Would you not rather just talk to people that are, you know, in your target market and, and um, you know, um, have sort of raised their hand in, in some way to say, yeah, I might be interested in what you've got to say. Like that's all marketing strategies. Um, I was saying that they say it's not true, not you. I'm so grateful for you teaching us right from wrong. No worries, Lynn. Thank you for your comment there. Okay, so the consistency. Uh, the number three thing she said was um, just playing a numbers game. So numbers of likes, numbers on pages, chasing a uh, number of people like on your page, like fans and followers, um, concentrating on views of lives, like just playing the numbers game, which a lot of us get caught up in. So um a big difference with this last year is when Zuckerberg said, we're not playing a numbers game anymore. You know, Instagram is the same. They're hiding likes, like the numbers of likes. You would have seen that on Facebook. You can't see the number anymore. Um, even on some like Facebook lives, you can't see how many people have viewed, you know, externally. You might be out from your business page end, but people can't see that externally because it's just not a numbers game anymore. The only way you're going to get true traction on social media is the engagement and the interaction. But there are still a lot of people that get caught up in the, in the numbers game, like the number of people on your page. Even if you've got thousands of people on your page, if they're the wrong people, it really, really hurts you because the wrong people on your page are not going to interact with you and then that hurts the algorithm. So whatever effort that you're putting into your social media, it's not getting seen by the right people. 
because your organic reach could be really, really low because you've got like thousands of people on your page, but they're all the wrong people. So, um, you know, they're not engaging with you because they're just not interested. And then that hurts the algorithm because Facebook's going, well, there's this many people here, but no many, nobody's engaging. And then obviously people are not connecting with this person's page. There's no, um, you know, the right signals aren't being fired off in the algorithm for you to, you know, get maximum organic reach. So sometimes um, people do stupid things like buy likes. Um, hopefully that's not happening anymore because the people that have actually taught those strategies have been sued now. So that happened last year. So there was a big wave of some people offering training for a couple of hundred dollars and they would um, they would promise you to, you know, to get about 10,000 likes on your page in, was it three days or seven days or something like that? And a lot of people did it. And I saw students that did it. But massive, massive backfire in how it plays out on your page because you've got a whole lot of people there that aren't doing anything. So that kind of numbers game is really um, bad for you to get caught up in. You are better to have a 1,000 people on your page that are you know, mainly interacting and engaging with you than 10,000 people on your page doing nothing. You are better to have 50 people watching your live video and 30 of those have engaged with you than 2,000 people watching you your video and no one engages or interact in, in, you know, interacts or comments. So there's still a lot of people that are not getting it with what's required on social media and it's all revolving around interaction and engagement and creating a sense of community and connecting with people, like really truly building relationships. So just remember that, like it's it's good to look at numbers, it's good to look at your insights, like your business insights and stuff like that and analyse your business for what it is, but you don't want to put all your weighting on the numbers because it's, got, it's, it, you know, it's not what makes you successful on social media. So that was number three. Number four is people on social media in this day and age, they're going straight for the sale. So they're leading um, people straight to a resource that leads them to a sale. So that was the kind of marketing strategies that people used to do, um, but it doesn't work on social media. The, the word itself, social, social media, we need to give value before we lead to the sale. So if your marketing strategies are still trying to lead people straight to the sale and you don't have a relationship with that person, then you're not going to be very successful with that. It's not the way social media works. You might be doing it, but there's going to be others around you that are building value first and they're more likely to get the sale than you are because it's just not what works on social media today in 2020, leading straight to the sale. I've said this many times in the last couple of weeks that the sale on social media could be should be a consequence of the value that you are providing people. So we need to bring, you know, what is that value that you're going to bring to your marketplace? What it is, what is it that you've branded yourself that you're going to teach people and entertain people and educate people on? So when your business page is just surrounded by leading people to something to sell them something, that is not going to be a successful formula in this day and age on social media. And that's a big reason why a lot of people are not successful on social media because they're going straight for the sale. So it's just not the way the world works in social media in 2020. It's all about building value first. You follow any, um, you know, successful person, you know, I know I keep picking on people like Gary Vee and Mel Robbins and whatever, but have a think about how much value they put out there and that you see on social media before you ever see them sell something to you. You see their value over and over and over again. You see their free videos and their free tips and all the rest of it before you see them selling you something. That's the way it is. In 2020 on social media, you have to adopt the same strategies, not to that scale. <laughs> no one's asking you to become a Gary Vee or a Mel Robbins, but that's the way you've got to think about it on a much lower level. What can I provide for free? What value can I bring before I lead people to the sale? So that's the fourth thing is that people are still trying to lead straight to the sale. Old school may have worked previously, may have worked even a year ago or two years ago. It's not the successful formula now in 2020. It's not social media doing that, okay? And the last one is exactly that. It's not being social. 
So number four was going straight to the sale, but number five is actually not being social on social media. So there's a number of things that play into that. It's like you might have a business page, um, but it's all business. Like you've gone a little bit too far with business and where are you? So social media is about getting to know the person behind the brand. So, um, you know, the good, bad, the ugly, the personal things, it can't be all business. This was a big flaw of mine when I first went on social media because I come from corporate and very businessy. It was all business. There was none of me. I wasn't sharing any of my personality. I didn't even know how to talk like a human being. I was still being that corporate person. <laughs> People weren't connecting with me back then. It took me a long time to become Helen. <laughs> And just be me. Now you just get me. But I wasn't like this when I first started on social media because I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't know what I was talking about. I didn't really have the skills. I didn't have any success yet. Like I just felt like an idiot. Who's going to listen to me? That things that you might be thinking now. So that takes time to sort of build that up. But you don't want to be all business because it's boring. People don't go on platforms like Facebook to be sold to. They just don't. <laughs> People don't go onto Facebook and go, oh, what can somebody sell me today on, you know, on this platform? Um, it's not what people are, are there for. They're there to build relationships, okay? So we don't want it to all be uh, business. We need to be social. But you don't want it to be so social, like on a business page, that it just looks like your personal profile and nobody really knows what you're doing and your branding's vague and your content's vague and it just looks like a personal profile. That's going way the other way. You're it's still here for business. You still want to get leads and sales. So we've got to find that lovely combination of giving value in a business sense, but still being genuinely, authentically you at the same time. So being social, having conversations with people. You don't sit in a room. Well, you might sit in a room and not talk. Um, but generally, if you invite somebody over, you just don't sit in a room and not talk to somebody. Like you're, you're social. You have conversations. Do what you do in you know, the human environment in the social media environment and have conversations with people, ask people's opinions, get them involved, create a sense of community on your business page, like involve people, ask what's important to them, what they're struggling with, like actually be social on social media. Um, you know, too many people are either way, either too businessy or it looks like a personal profile and there's nothing really businessy there. They're just trying to get fans and followers to pitch them their thing. So that's not going to be successful on social media either, okay? Does this make sense? Did any of that resonate with you? Okay, Susan, I had no idea I would end up here, that's for sure. I'm lucky I have this community to get me where I want to go. This is a like-minded group that understands what we were going through. Yeah, because there's plenty of challenges and it's because we're not brought up with this. We didn't enter this to learn about marketing, but suddenly you're here. <laughs> It's like, how the hell did I end up here? I just wanted to make a few extra dollars in my business. And now I'm learning about not only that business, but now I'm learning about social media and marketing and all the, all those kind of things. I watched a webinar where they called this flop, the spaghetti factor, just throwing up stuff and hoping it's this. Yeah. So I guess that's just the same as mud. You just throw up the spaghetti. Some of it might stick to the wall, but most of it's going to fall down. Um, it's, it's, it's just not what works. Hi, Tammy. How are you? Um, yeah, I caught, caught that one. Hello, Sonia. Um, oh, you're obviously talking about something that, that resonates there. I lose it. Yep. Uh, oh, okay. I'm going backwards there. Um, they start to hide from you. Yeah, people that don't want to hear your message, they're gone. Yes, Tammy, happy Valentine's Day to everyone in Australia and early hours of the UK and other parts of the world. And for you guys that are almost there, we're just getting in early. Happy Valentine's Day. Would it be rude to remove those people from your page that never interact? No, it would actually do your page a favor if you got rid of people that you know just are not in your target marker and they never engage or interact, then um, just just get, get, get them off your page. They're not doing you any favors. They're not doing the algorithm any favors. It's not good to have people on your page that are, that are not representative of your target market for one and will never engage or interact because the, the reality of them ever opting into whatever it is that you're offering or they'll ever buy something off you is, is probably like that. So if that's, if that's not going to happen, you sort of know that's not going to happen, then they're, then they're, they're no use being there. Um, 
if you are truly giving value, they will ask you what you can offer them and you won't need to ask yourself, that's it, Jennifer. In this day and age, the sale should be a consequence of the value that you are providing. Um, Helen, when you talk, you make so much sense. Well, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah. It's mumbo jumbo until you speak on the topic. Thank you. Okay, I'm glad I'm making sense. If I was confusing you, that would not be a good thing. So thanks for your feedback, Melanie. I consider you to be right up there. I will not. Thank you very much, Lynn. That um, no, that that's a massive compliment. I certainly don't put myself in that league, but that's that's so cute. <laughs> Paige, I'm late. It's okay, Paige. That's what the replays are for. It's lovely to see you here. Make your business page a social group. I like that, Jen. So one of my things, I think I've shared with this with you guys before, but you may not have heard it, is somebody said to me probably 18 months, two years ago, I was saying, you know, I don't want to start another group and, you know, things like that. And this person said to me, there's absolutely no reason you can't create a sense of community on a public business page. I'm like, okay, I hadn't thought of it that way because it's kind of doesn't really fit like business pages. And I took that on board, absolutely took that on board. And I'm like, yep, I'm going to create a sense of community on my business page. And for those of you that have been around me for a while, would you say that we've got that to some degree? that, you know, this crew that we've got here, we're on a public business page. We're not in a group. Well, some of you might be listening from my free group because I'm just broadcasting in both places. But I would encourage you to take that on as well. You absolutely can create a sense of community on a public business page. These are the kind of things that I'm going to be talking about next week in the Boost Your Business Page boot camp in my coaching community. If you want to join us, you can join for a dollar for a three-day trial. The link is above. And you get all my other boot camps, like about five grand's worth of training, like branding, content creation, bots, Facebook advertising, the whole bit is all included with that. I'm not going to offer that moving forward anymore. I spoke to my coaching community about that yesterday. Any of you in my coaching community that missed my video in there yesterday, I've got some cool changes coming for the coaching community. And if you're already in the coaching community, you're going to love it but it's going to be different moving forward that people enter later. So, yeah, just watch that video, those of you in my coaching community, okay? So, yeah, I love your understanding of that, Jen, and, you know, your thoughts around that because it's absolutely true. Uh, Heather, definite value from you. We're good to know. Good, I have some deleting to do. Awesome. If that's what you need to do, go and do it. Yes, awesome community. Helen Martin, you have an amazing sense of community in your business page. We all love you and the crew here. Awesome. Oh, thank you, Jen. I appreciate your comment here. Um, but just, you know, just awesome community here. Yeah, so we're on a public business page. Like you, you go to other public business pages and you don't necessarily think about it as a sense of community when you go there. You're just visiting, you know, whatever. But I would encourage you to really embrace that concept of what you would have in a group and build that on your page. But that requires you to do a certain number of things. All these five things that I've mentioned, like know who you're talking to so you've got the right people there. It's easier with a group because people put their hand up and request to join. So you don't have to do the hard work on a business page. You have to do the hard work with your target market and talk to the right people to attract the right people. So, you know, I don't talk about, you know, um, cows or horses or gardening or yachts or God knows how all those things came into my head. But if I did, that might be the people that attracted to me, people that were in, interested in yachts or cows or horses or whatever. Like I talk about social media. I'm very focused on my target market and I attract you guys that want to hear my message and I can help solve your problems. Very specific. So have you got that on your page? Do you know exactly what it is that you are teaching people and what problems you're solving for them and what value you're bringing, you know, all the time on your page. When you do, when you sort that out, you will attract the right people. When you attract the right people and you feel like you're all on a common common page, then you'll create a sense of community. So if you're going with the spaghetti theory, everyone's my prospect, throw it up against the wall and let's see who stick. You've got absolutely no chance in hell of creating a sense of community on a business page because it's just spray and pray. You just won't be able to achieve that. So the more laser focused it is on the type of person that you want to attract 
and you talk to that person, that's how you'll attract that and you'll attract more of that. Then you've got half an opportunity to create a sense of community. But not until you've got your target market sorted out and you are consistent and you're going for interaction and engagement, you're not playing a numbers game and you're really social and you're really genuine and you're really authentic and you're giving good content, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? It's not actually that difficult. But this is the marketing stuff that network marketing, marketing companies don't talk about. And nor should they really, because it's not their bag. They're good at what they are good at. But if you're trying to build on social media, please realize the fact that you've entered the world into marketing. Whether you realize it or not, you have now entered the world of knowing how to be a social media marketer. And you are up against some other people that are learning the skills and are learning to do Facebook ads really, really well. And you will get left behind on social media unless you bring your skills up and work out what's working in 2020, okay? And I've just given you five reasons that people are not successful in 2020. So work out where you're lacking and bring up your skill level, um, you know, in those areas because we are in a competitive environment. And as I told you yesterday or the day before, if you're not building now and building within the next three years, it's going to be impossible for you to crack into this market and social media. You need to build a following now. You need to really hone in on your business page now. Know all the little tips and tricks to increase your, you know, following and get the right people and get the right target market and all those kind of things. So many of the things that I'll be going through next week in my boot camp. Like put the effort in now and you'll get the rewards from that in time to come when everyone else is trying to enter the market and it's going to be too hard. It's going to be too busy. There's probably things that we get for free now that we may not get for free in the future. But if you've got an already established community or you're building one now, you're going to be in good stead to have a really good foundation for your business. Um, so it needs to be now, guys. You need to sort this stuff out now. You need to sort out your brand now, your page now. Um, learn the things that's going to make yourself have a big, a better, bigger awesome business page because that's where the future is. It's not in personal profiles. They're going back to sort of private, you know, content. Um, so, yeah, really, really important that you get this stuff nutted out now. But manage your expectations on how long it's going to take. Just because you put the effort in now doesn't mean you're going to be successful by Christmas time. You need to earn people's right to turn up and spend their time with you. Life is busy. And you need to appreciate your people. Like, I really, really appreciate you giving up your time. There's so many other things that you guys could be doing right now. And I am very, very grateful that you are spending your current time with me. Like, I'm really, really appreciative of that. And those of you that know me well know that I'm actually really sincere with that. And I treat you guys like my family. You're my community. So create that for yourself on your business page and love on your people and create that sense of community for yourself. There is enough people out there for every single one of you to create your own tribe, but you got to earn it, guys. It's not spray and pray. It doesn't work. It just won't work in 2020 moving forward, okay? Shall I get off my little soapbox? Now, how do I always end up on my soapbox? If there's anything that you can learn about me, at least I'm passionate. <laughs> and I just want to see you guys succeed. Um, but to succeed, you've got to get up with the times. This is modern social media. This is not spray and pray. The spray and pray doesn't work anymore. Um, if you're truly giving value, uh, yeah, okay, we 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 certainly went there. Um, hello, Mark, you have an amazing sense of community and business page. We all love the crew here. Now I'm going backwards, I think. Uh, Wendy, I can't believe I just did my challenge day 16 the same time you were on. No worries. That's what the replay's for, Wendy. You're here now. <laughs> Once again, you make everything so clear of what I need to do. That's why I talk about it. That makes me so happy, Crystal. If you get some clarity from something that I say on one of my videos, and i got to say, Crystal, I'm going to single you out here. There's something, I won't mention what it is, but there's something that I mentioned on one of my videos last week. It, it, um, affected Crystal in a way and she thought, yeah, I'm going to do something about that. She did something about it and it had a massive impact in her life. And I'm so, 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 so proud of you. So when you listen, learn and take the action, it can make massive difference um, in your life. Well done to you. Well, I need to change my likes campaign again. Well, that's a good thing. That's a good thing, Gloria. <laughs> Can't wait for the boot camp next week. I've got so many golden nuggets for you guys. Just little things 
Um, you know, and when I say the uh, golden nuggets, I've got to go. I've got to get in a webinar in a minute. Um, when I say golden nuggets, there's no silver bullet, guys. There's no one thing that I can tell you that's suddenly going to turn around your business page. But there is a whole lot of combinations of little things that if you do them can make a massive difference. I know it because I did it last week. I tried some different things and I increased my organic reach by 23%. Like I was pretty happy with that and didn't really take much effort from me. So those are the kind of things that I'm going to share with you. So it's lots of little things that you can do that all have a, you know, once combined together can have a massive impact. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you. Yes, I've seen that. You're amazing and incredible. Very inspiring. <laughs> thank you, Crystal. Okay. Um, now, I need to go because I've got to get on a webinar where we're talking to a whole lot of people about shut down Facebook ads and what to do about it and stuff like that. So we're about to have a lot of fun. Um, so oh, how did I talk that long again? Like I've just looked at the clock. So I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry, guys. I just really don't want to talk that long, but I just get on my little soapbox. So I hope you appreciate the content and it's had some kind of value for you. Let me know if it has. And I will see you guys. Oh, where's tennis tomorrow? I'm not sure where tennis is tomorrow. I should be live at the same time. May not be the same place, depending where the boys are playing tennis. So you'll see me pop up some from somewhere tomorrow, but I'll be here. Okay, so I'll catch you then, guys. Bye.